Let us see what this new look Sabres team can do. Let's do it. Oh boy, I can't type. I can't type. There we go. We are good. So, this season then, this lovely, lovely season of ours, of course, we took a look at what this team happened to look like. We made some changes. Uh, there are still other deals that uh, could certainly go down. Moving on from Anders Bjork, potentially having to move on from a defenseman. And it was raised, uh, the question that is, of why not pair Yoki Haru with the likes of Bjork? Uh, I can try. We'll see. And uh, we'll see what we got. Um, Expanky, I am on PC. I was never a big Mac fan. Will this result in anything? Nine trades. Harley, Stranges, a lot of interest from Dallas. And unfortunately, some of those other deals are just grenades. So that would be a pretty big risk, all things considered. But for now, we move ahead. We'll see if Yoki Haru is good to go. Before we do that, however, there is something that must be done. And unfortunately, I'm a goof who uh, didn't save the, uh, the same wheel that we had before, but we must spin the wheel, go figure, to figure out how many wins we need this season in order to be allowed to sign more scouts. Last year it was 30 wins and we nailed it. This year it is 40. 40 wins to earn more scouts. Rest in peace in peace. 40 wins to get more scouts. So our three have our work cut out for them. If we, if we don't hit 40, we lose three scouts. No. I, I won't have it be that we lose scouts. It can only be that we gain scouts. Once we get them, we keep them. So we'll send the opening month of the season, and I think you can tell how this year's gonna go. No new scouts for us here in Buffalo. Although we did go on a nice little run there at the end of the month. So 4-7-0 through our first 11 games. Jack Eichel, happy to be back. 13 points in 11 games. Good return for him. He's still rocking an 85. Cousins looking good. Olofsson looking good. Uh, that second line's been okay so far. Nikita Gusev's crushing it too. All right, so far so good. That Bryson Dahlin pairing is not exactly crushing it though. Ender, I will fight you. Holy hell, our goaltending's been abysmal. Wow, our goaltending's been abysmal. So we are running out of time. I'm going to say we go middle of the month. And if we still don't have an answer from Yoki Haru, we're going to have to make something happen here. And I don't think I don't think he's going to sign. They rarely ever do. We'll actually go a week away from his deadline. We get an offer, a second rounder for a third and Calvin DeHaan. Absolutely not. All right, guys, we have a decision to make. We have a decision to make with Henry Yoki Haru. We let him sit out for the year and then hope that we're allowed to negotiate with him next year or we just move on from him now. And I feel like it's probably for the best to just move on from him now. <sighs> I think we have to. So the question is, aside from him, obviously we're not really going to be able to move on from Sororkin or Reimer. Even though they suck, it makes sense. Just keep them for now. Use Lucan in next year. For the defense, I mean, he's our third most valuable defenseman. That's a huge loss. It really is. God, how I'd love to pair like Kron home. With some, whoops, I just realized I went to the wrong trade screen. Again, fine trades only for the sake of difficulty. I just wanted to check if like Kron home has any value. He doesn't. So the wise decision. Again, I like the idea of keeping Reinhardt. I like the idea of keeping Olofsson. Obviously, like Jack Quinn will hold on to. Bull to uh, Bull Duke. Lukachev is is an interesting one. Reinhardt to Calgary. Yeah, like, I'm not interested in like anything that's being offered there for Sam Reinhardt. Like two second round picks isn't worth it. He's he's worth more than that. 
what's out there for Lukachev? Because he is not going to develop. A third and a fourth. That is not a ton of value. Not at all. And the return here appears to be a you know couple grenade offers in return of here, take my horrible contract. So that hurts. Now I was wrong in that Anders Bjork's value did drop a little bit. He's actually been okay with nine points in twenty-two games. So that kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm not surprised that his value dropped. I had to find out though. I needed to I needed to wait. Because I was gonna pair him in that deal with Yoki Haru. But we could pair Lakachev too. Again, Bjork hasn't been bad on the fourth line. Got Flopic as well. Who's been pretty meh in the AHL. Tage Thompson's value has uh, seemingly dropped a little bit too. Maybe we should have uh, ridden the highs and gotten rid of them when we had the chance. For Yoki Haru, what are the offers that are out there right now? There's 33 offers. And again, some of them are okay, like the Timmins deal or that Dallas offer. Those Dallas offers in general. And some are pretty rough. If we were to add Lakachev to that... I mean, look at that. That's such a bad deal. So, from the looks of it, we're going to hold on to Lakachev here unless we decide to get rid of him in a different deal. I mean, if he can't get us a better offer, then there's no reason to trade Anders Bjork. Yes, there is. Never mind. I stand corrected. I would hate to end up with Allmark back. Or either one of the three. So there are four offers that suck. Maybe five. Two Edmonton deals and the three Vancouver deals suck. The other 12 offers are fantastic. In terms of a really good return. We gotta go for it. As much as I don't want to get rid of Anders Bjork, we gotta go for it. Like I said, he hasn't been bad, but if we can use him and Yoki Haru to get it done, we should. It's weird that he resulted in better offers than it, uh, Lakachev did pairing him with him. And obviously, Tage Thompson's a year younger. He could still get better. Just for uh, for the halibut. All right, no offers there. Anders Bjork's got to go. We got to flip him. He's never going to be great. He's been okay this year on a bad team. So, there are 17 offers. I think you guys know how this works by now, for how we've been running things here. We will put the numbers 1 through 19 on the wheel, and we, if I can hit the right button, will see what happens in terms of what trade we would have to accept if uh, we elected to go through with the deal. Moment of truth here. 1 through 17. Number 12. If we pull the trigger right now, it's for number 12. Which is the door off from Edmonton, a second and a third. We just avoided the other two Edmonton deals involving Allmark. It's the door off, a second and a third for Yoki Haru and Bjork. How good is the door off? 65 overall at 19 years old. He was 16th overall this year. Two way forward. I think I think that's a deal we're taking. Again, as much as I'd love to uh, keep Yoki Haru, he's just not signing. And out of the dudes that they have on the block, I mean, obviously you could argue Philip Berg or uh, Lavoie here, Lavoie, Lajoie, whatever the hell it is. But we're we're doing pretty well here. What's the door off? And Edmonton is a bad team right now, so those picks, granted, they're for two. Those picks are two years from now, though, which is the rough thing. But who knows where Edmonton is at that stage? Yoki Haru, we're not allowed to negotiate. He has chosen not to sign, which is a big loss. We needed him to kind of be a part of our, our defense core moving forward. It's either he sits out for the entire year, or we pull off the trigger on this trade. 
or pull the trigger and uh, get this trade done, I should say. I think, I think we do it. Because there's no guarantees even next year he'd want to negotiate, and that's very dangerous for us. Yoki Haru, Anders Bjork, for Zadorov, a second and a third, both in 2023. We will take that trade. Again, unfortunately, someone just not wanting to sign with Yoki Haru. We were left with very limited options. So now we have 10, 11, and 12. Zadorov will obviously be sent down. And from there, I still think it's it's probably worth going with the likes of Gergensen's or Okpozo. And we'll go with Zemgis for now. Just to try to boost up the morale of the team. We'll slot him right into the lines that Anders Bjork happened to be playing. And there we go. You could argue Rasmus Osplund would be better suited. Perhaps better suited in the AHL. But he is waiver eligible at this stage, so he'll have to stay. Alright, we are good. Devs, take it easy, man. Catch you later. Let's get Zador off in. Down in the AHL. And we got Philip Schlopik onto that top line. Not bad. So that deal is uh, that deal is done. I tried to trade Jeff Skinner. We are absolutely stuck with that albatross. <laughs> absolutely stuck. So let's march on then. It's looking like it's going to be a real rough year for us, to the surprise of nobody. But let's see how it plays out. Cooper Marotti is on waivers. I might as well claim him. So thank you, Edmonton, for that. So basically, you can add Cooper Marotti to that trade. It was the three, uh, the prospect, the two picks, and Cooper Marotti, which is pretty nice. You know, we basically got a free player in the deal uh, who could take up space, especially if we choose to be active at the deadline. I need to... Wow, we just beat Calgary 10-2. I need to remember to take Jack Eichel off of the uh, the block. Uh, there's no way we're taking that trade. I should have just edited the block there, but I'm dumb. I'm used to not having AI trade offers on, and we are in the playoffs right now. 22-15-2. Jack Eichel with 52 points in 39 games... We're actually doing okay. Cooper Marotti's a singer. That is a fun fact. Dude, I never use the trade block in games like this because I never... Like, I never bother with the AI trade offers because they're normally so bad. But right now, it's like, I don't want anything. Thank you. Like, right now, I am good to just hold on to what I want. Because normally, I don't make deals unless it's... Okay, I want something. I'm going to go make a deal. So... I should make Jack Eichel feel a little bit better. So as of January 1st, we're looking good. We need 18 more wins. We've won 8 of our last 10. But 18 more wins to earn ourselves some scouts, which will really raise the question of do we sell at the deadline with the amount of rentals that we brought in. Now, the topic of conversation came up about no movements, no trades, right? I still think I kind of want to factor that in. But none of the guys that we signed as free agents were super high value. Uh, you could argue that maybe for Mike Hoffman, we should have said, hey, he has a no trade because he signed for like four million bucks, right? But he's really the only one uh, was Hoffman to say, hey, is there a limitation? Jeff Skinner is uh, up to an 80 overall. So. Man, Rasmus Dahlin's looking great. Jack Johnson. Look at you! Matt Irwin has 10 goals. God damn. Reimer up to a 903. Ilya Sororkin's been terrible. He's definitely not coming back next year. We'll probably have a complete goaltending change again. So we'll sim two weeks into the month. We'll bring us just before deadline day. As the Winnipeg Jets have fired their head coach. 30, man, we're seven wins away. We might actually hit 40 wins, guys. We're in second in the division with a game at hand on Toronto. Uh-huh. Olofsson's looking good. Cousins is looking good. Eichel's looking good. Back up to an 89 still. Hoffman's looking great. 49 points. 
Reinhardt, not quite scoring goals, but still getting assists. Middlestad's been solid. Nikita Gusev's been phenomenal. That fourth line hasn't been amazing, but not completely abysmal. It's, it's ridiculous that this team's even pushing for a playoff spot here. I mean, obviously we're not going to buy. If we're going to make the playoffs, then so be it. But man, seven wins in the final month and a half or so. And we get extra scouts. It's just, do we sell at the deadline? We have to make that call. It is deadline day. Let's say in theory, I list myself as a seller. We will enter deadline day for the first time in a while. Quinn Hughes is still there as an RFA, which is nuts. So, I mean, the Canucks never signed Quinn Hughes. What would they want for Quinn? I can't get him. There's nothing of value. There's nothing of value that we can do to get Quinn Hughes. I mean, Shea Weber's available, but he's got five years left. Apparently, Eichel's out there, but again, we're not getting rid of Jack Eichel. There's no way. Petrie, Tave, Seth Jones... We do have a trade that might have been for Jones or not. The Devils trade a second, Kevin Ball, a third, and a fourth for Eric Gustafson. Holy shit. Apparently they're postulating that uh, he's out there too. Let me, let me double check here. Let me double check. When it comes to our players, can we get any sort of value here? Ilya Sororkin's been terrible. If we wanted to, we could sell off uh, Sororkin for something. Hoffman, Gusev, and Irwin for the Rangers' first round pick in 2023 and Georgiev. Wow. Hoffman and Gusev have both been phenomenal. But we would get a first rounder out of it down the road from the Rangers. The big question is, could I technically get more back? Is there a better offer out there for Hoffman? Do we even want to sell Hoffman? We, we still need seven wins this year, minimum. But the, you know, obviously these three are like pure rentals this year. I mean, again, Hoffman... What, 50 points in 61 games? He's been incredible. He's going to be way too expensive to re-sign next year, and it's gone. Gusev, a third. For, see, like, we can get a first for Gusev. It's Gusev and a third for a first, a fifth, and Larson. Gusev on his own can get a first. I'm going to decline this. And we're just going to see what the hell is out there, maybe. I don't even know. I was trying to see what the hell was out there. It sucks those offers disappear. All right, number one, get these guys off the goddamn board. Hello, Phil. I'm clearing this out. I mean, we probably should sell the dudes on one-year deals. We probably should. I just need to make sure we hit 40 wins. Another trade's out. Linus Allmark to Nashville for Drake Kajula and Matt Benning. That seems like very little. Bizarre trade there. Edmonton signed him and didn't even keep him for that long. So if we go to find trade here. I mean, initially for me, it was going to be Sororkin. Just to get something for him because he's been horrible. And we could even have Tokarski as the backup for the rest of the year. Lukanen only has a 9.05 in the AHL, so he's definitely not ready. What the hell could I get for Sororkin? Apparently nothing now. For the defense... I mean, basically everyone on our blue line is a rental. Apparently nobody wants Sororkin. Is understandable. Nobody wants Erwin either. I can't get Jack Hughes. Or Jack Hughes. Quinn Hughes. I tried. 
tried, I tried, I tried twice. It's not happening. We got another trade from Boston. A first, second, and a prospect for Ryan Pollock. Holy shit, I would die. I'd be so happy. I'd be so happy for the old Pulak. That'd be incredible. Yeah, look at Hoffman's value. We have to take advantage of that. No trades found. Really? And even Gusev's value has gone up pretty far. Trades of the day. All right, what we're gonna do is set up the trade block here. Well, no, Sergachev, I'm searching by open block. Trust me, I'm, I'm aware. I'm searching by open block and still nothing. I think you should have taken the Anaheim cherry. Me too, from the looks of it. But I was really thrown off by the fact that the Rangers trade disappeared because I don't think it should have happened. But what we're going to do is pretty much fully open up the trade block here and see what comes down the pike. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we start getting some offers. Like I'm just going to flat out open up the trade block literally to get an offer for anything and everything. Not just pending UFAs. And we're going to see what we get offered. Although I am tempted to set it up as just UFAs, but hey, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. And the cool thing is I've barely been able to feature this, uh, you know, the whole new trade deadline deal. Actually, now that I think about it, on the block, let's, ah, uh, oh, shit. Let's get Hoffman up there, if it even does anything. Get Gusev up there especially. So, until we get a potential offer then, I mean, we're just kind of left wondering. Apparently, uh, we have a trade through. Marco Rossi and a third for Ryan Getzloff, Martin Furk, and Trevor Moore. That is the biggest robbery I've ever seen. Jesus. And apparently Eichel's out there. Pittsburgh, New Jersey, and Vegas are interested. It's just there's no... No chance in hell of that happening. You know, the funny thing is, I was actually going to see what the hell was out there in terms of, like, who's on the block for other teams that we might be able to sneak in for. Adam Ernie, Troy Stetcher in a fourth for Matt Robertson. AI hey, just wheel and deal like mad. Like, Jacob Perot's out there from Anaheim. I'm willing to take any of those three. Does Jacob Perot want to come here? It's a yes or no question. Because I am absolutely willing to do that at, like, first look. Unless there's somebody out there better than Jacob Perot. We got to do a little bit of research here, boys. We got to do a little bit of research. So Perot is a 75 at 19 years old. Is there anybody who can kind of line up with that? I mean, Brant Clark's a 72 at 19, but there's no... Ooh, Ratu. No. It's too much. Well, speaking of one Atu Ratu, holy hell. A first, a second, a third, and Xavier Borgo. I'm going to say no to that. For obvious reasons. But, uh, hey, good attempt there, Washington. Good attempt. Jesus. All right, really quickly. Winnipeg. Who do you got? Uh, Nikolai Ellers. Nick Ellers. Jeez, really? Lukanen. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, Xavier Borgo. Again, uh, Perot's better. 15 points better. Like Krebs and Lecician aren't bad. Nor is Korshak. Like, if I wanted, like, the trio of them. Olofsson, Irwin, Osplund. That's not worth it. Olofsson's better than any of them. Again, Quinn Hughes, nothing. We just don't have the value. Sam Reinhart and Nikita Gusev. It involves Marc-Andre Fleury. Absolutely not. Honestly, I'm not too happy with the offers, so we're going to go back over to Surplus. 
and uh, switch it up to just be pending UFAs. I'll do it that way. I don't think I'm going to leverage any of the future here, unless we find that trade ourselves. So again, the Coob, there was nothing I wanted. Got a trade involving Winnipeg. Ellers is on the move. A first rounder, Henri Nikonen for Jeff Petrie. And pa Jesus Christ, Montreal, huh? Jeff Petrie on the move. So we got a Vander Kane, Tomas Hurdle. Hurdle's on an expiring deal. He'd probably be too expensive. Especially at an 85, he's going to want to raise, so there's no way that's going to happen. They've been Lassell and Sam Poulan. Again, I still like Jacob Perot. Hoffman for two seconds and Oscar Steen. Do we hold out because we were technically offered more before or do we just take it? We should have pounced on that Rangers deal, but I feel like if we hold out, we might get something better. I'm not going to Taylor Hall this. I want a first rounder for Mike Hoffman. <laughs> Sorry, Sabres fans. But I'm not going to Taylor Hall this. We're going to hold out. I mean, we have to make sure we get something for him, but, you know. Forster, McLennan. I mean, our best option in terms of prospect, like I said, is still Perot. It's not even close. They are a shame. Braden Schneider, that's pretty good if they were under 20. Matt Barzell. A disgruntled Matt Barzell. Hello. 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 Ooh, Barzell for middle stat. Oh God, but we, we give up contract years. Barzell for middle stat, one for one. I think we have to take that. I think we have to. Done deal. Matt Barzell, welcome to Buffalo. For Casey Middlestat, one for one. What just happened? What just happened? We turned an 85 medium elite with three years left into Matt Barzell, who only has next year left. But we have Matt Barzell and Jack Eichel on the same team. Without me cheesing the AI. Oh my god. What just happened? And he fits our top line. Olafson and a fifth for a first. Poulin and pop off. I'm going to say no to that now. I'm going to say no to that now. I don't think we could get anybody who's as good as Olafson. Because I don't think Poulin's good enough to develop at this stage. How good is Sam Poulin? Yeah, he's a 74 at 21. If he was like a 78 or an 80, I'd say yes. I'm not going to take that. If Poulin was a little bit more developed... That is insane. We just absolutely stole Matt Barzell. Holy hell, man. I mean, you see how good Casey Middlestad is, and it's pretty ridiculous, but my god. Give me a second here, guys. And the cat and the dog. Remember what I said about the cat and the dog arguing? They argued. So Casey Middlestat is showing up as an 83. And uh, yeah, we just absolutely stole him. And to get him back, it would be Matt Barzell in a second. They're full of shit. Oh, do I have the... Uh, I do, McSpanky. I do have the Bruins alternate from like 2000. The Pooh Bear. It's a, uh, it's a Joe Thornton. I don't have it with me though. It's at my house. Which, I mean, girlfriend and I are moving in to a house soon, so... Uh, that'll soon be my house. Nick Letty on a rental. I'm just... Hold on. I'm just intrigued. Nothing. Okay. Uh, the Devils. Nothing I want. Eckholm. On an expiring deal, which means he's going to be expensive as balls. Jack Quinn, Sward, and Thompson. Lakachev, Sward, and a second would totally be worth it because I don't think the two prospects already are going to develop. The question is, 
whether or not Eckholm would re-sign and for how much. But those two prospects aren't going to develop. The only way I would do it uh, is, number one, what the hell is Eckholm's overall? 86. Like, how much money is he going to... Uh... God, I'd, I'd have to basically get the word of, like, would he be willing to re-sign. And I feel like that'd be cheesing it a little bit too much. So, we're, we're going to say no to that. Montreal, I know we're running out of time. I'm trying to speed my way to the pro deal. Ooh, Beckman. Beckman is almost as good, but not quite. There's also Cashman. Beckman's not quite as good as Perot. Mata Brown. Lundell. There's no way I can get Lundell at this stage. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, fucking find a trade. Because we are running out of time. Mike Hoffman, what can we get? Fuck. Oh, dude, we're gonna run out of time before I can do anything. Shit! Well, I guess we're going for the playoffs, boys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, we didn't sell Matt Barzell. Or we didn't sell Mike Hoffman. Or Nikita Gusev, but I did I did trade Casey Middlestat for Matt Barzell. So, um, you take the good with the bad, chat. I feel like there was more that could have been done. But you, uh, you take the good with the bad. So... Again, if it was up to me, I would have sold Hoffman and Gusev. Instead, we didn't, and we're going to lose them at the end of the year. But we did get Matt Barzell. I got to be completely honest, I forgot it was noon that it ends. We could have at least gotten those seconds for Hoffman, but you know... Fuck. I don't know. We'll take the good with the bad. We got Matt Barzell. And we didn't immediately flip players as rentals. So, hey. It is what it is. Um, to look at the team here, then. Honestly, I'm good with keeping that third line the way it was. And then for this top six. You can make the argument... Of who should be where. Because, I mean, this top line's crushed it. You know, do you put Barzell with Eichel? Or do you leave them on two different lines? To just dominate, you know? Because Barzell's... I mean, imagine a, a one-two punch of Eichel-Barzell up the middle. Or even not. I mean, I guess Eichel on the wing. Even then, Dylan Cousins as a second-line center would be the way to go. That's unreal. Even, I mean, no matter what, that's unreal. It's a good thing we kept Hoffman. I mean, because otherwise that second line would be Jeff Skinner. And then if uh, Gusev and Hoffman were gone, we'd probably call up, like, Okpozo and Kiviranta. Oh, man, I'm... Ah, fuck. That's how it works. That's how a deadline works. You don't often get done all the deals you want to get done, right? And uh, we didn't. And it's, it's all right. Yeah, you know, this was the one time we didn't get to just immediately sell everybody. It happens. You don't always get to just get rid of all of your uh, all of your garbage and get all of your deals done. Fuck. The problem is, like, the first hour or so of that deadline, the cup, first couple hours, it was really quiet. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh my god, we got offered a first round pick, and oh my god, let's quickly look here, and there was just, there was just a lot going on. There was a lot going on. So I still feel like we did pretty good given the circumstances, but I can't say I'm 
I'm incredibly happy. I mean, I guess the thought is we didn't do our best at securing our future, but we did pick up Matt Barzell. And what he might be able to turn into, if we can't re-sign him, or if we do re-sign him, then who's to say, right? But the deadline is done. We need 40 wins on the year. We lost to the Canucks on deadline day. Five more wins. We're at the beginning of March, currently in a playoff spot. Five more wins. And we get ourselves some extra scouts next season. Okay, it's 40 wins that we need. And we got it. All right, so two years in a row, we're going to be able to add in more scouts, which I never expected. Ever. Guys, we're currently in a playoff spot. We have six, uh, excuse me, seven games to go. Two games in hand on the Leafs with the same amount of points. We are on the verge, on the cusp of making the playoffs in season two. Still right there, neck and neck. We are dead even with the Leafs, but we have the tiebreaker. We're still right there. We've yet to clinch. We have a game at hand on Toronto. We beat Nashville, we're in a good spot. We lost. We control our destiny here, especially in this game directly against Toronto. It might as well be a playoff game in season two of all seasons. Let's rock. First period, one nothing Leafs, John Tavares. Second period, Mulligan and Matthews. A 3 nothing shutout win for the Leafs. But the Buffalo Sabres have clinched a playoff spot in season two. We beat Carolina and jump all the way to the third seed. We will play the Detroit Red Wings in round number one of the second year playoffs. I don't even know, man. I don't even know. Maybe it's a good thing we didn't get rid of Hoffman and Gusev. Although it would have been the best of both worlds if we did, we would have gotten more assets and probably another lottery pick. But now that we made it, I mean, this team could do some serious damage based on this offense. Victor Olipson. 26 goals again, 69 points on the season. Matt Barzell finished with 59 points. He had 19 points in 21 games after just 40 points in 63 with the Islanders. Still, though, the plus minus is concerning. I think we break he and Eichel up. And then Eichel, of course, 87 points in his return, which is fantastic. Mike Hoffman, 66 points as a one-year rental. He's certainly not coming back next year. He's certainly not. He's going to be way too expensive, but we have helped revitalize Mike Hoffman's career. Dylan Cousins finished with 74 points in his sophomore year, splitting time on the first line in the second. And Sam Reinhart with 69 points this year, up from the 64 he had last year. Again, I just can't help but think it's the right way to go. I'm going to put Cousins as our top line center. I want to see how Eichel and Barzell do apart. I know that Barzell was you know, putting up points, but the plus minus was pretty concerning, the five on five defense. Third line, Tage Thompson with a solid 30 points on the third line, can't complain about that at all. FJ, what's up, man? Uh, next in Nikita Gusev on the power play, who put up 56 points as well as a one year rental. So Nikita Gusev uh, will certainly be gone next year as well. And Jeff Skinner up to an 82. Had 35 fan points boy. and 21 the goals. The man was a fanboy. Chris, good morning to you. Thank you for the 22 months. You'll love to see it. Uh, no, the plus minus was outright here. It's a split stat line. He was a minus 29 uh, with the Islanders, a minus 7 here. So. And on the fourth line, whoops, Erasmus Osplund. 19 points. Eh. Might send him down for Okpozo. Cody Eakin. Eh. And Zemgis Gergensen's was actually good offensively. I'm a little bit worried about that fourth line, but we don't roll it out all that often. The defense. That's right. This defense made the playoffs. It's beautiful. Rasmus Dahlin, 56 points. Crazy, crazy, crazy. 
And Jacob Bryson with 14 and a minus one. Jack Johnson, 19 points on the year. Alongside one Matt Irwin who put up 15 goals. We almost traded him at the deadline there too. Rock the throwback, what is going on? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the home of dumb franchise things. Very dumb franchise things. Artem Zub, 15 points. And Yannick Weber with 20. So, I don't know how the hell we did it, guys, but we did it. We made the playoffs. Ilya Sorokin at a 900 save percentage, as well as James Reimer. We'll rock with Reimer in the playoffs. And, of course, no healthy scratches. We kept injuries off. I feel like we might. So, I'm still torn. I mean, again, we picked up Barzell at the deadline for Casey Middlestat. The deal was one for one. But, like, the just the loss of, you know, potential assets from not trading our rentals like Hoffman and Gusev, it, it hurts a bit. For sure. So, I'm a little bit torn. But again, we have uh, we have made the playoffs. That's the dumbest thing in the world. We need the 40 wins. We got 45. Again, we'll be playing Detroit in round number one. As the Tampa Bay Lightning missed the playoffs after winning back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. So, figure that one out. And indeed, we have revived Jack Johnson's career. <laughs> Carolina, Pittsburgh, and Washington all also made it. That's the word I was looking for. I was going to say the Rangers and the Flyers just missed. The Islanders were terrible. So that's not a surprise. In the Central, you have St. Louis, Dallas, and Minnesota. Colorado missed. Winnipeg still sucks. And in the Pacific, Anaheim, Vegas, San Jose, Vancouver, and Edmonton. Goddamn. The Florida Panthers won the President's oh, Trophy. The worst God, team in the for league. You. That's just a bunch of letters, but thank you for the follow. Uh, the LA Kings were the worst team in the league. Uh, I have done a lot of 30-second team expansions. We didn't do it this time, though. Uh, Frank, pretty close to the Hurricanes. Not quite as kind of hardcore as that Hurricanes run. Because I feel like it just wouldn't necessarily translate as well. Um, but yeah, I guess kind of similar to it, yeah. So again, we've seen our point totals. As Evgeny Malkin and Alex Ovechkin. See, I feel like our, our the majority of the save percentages are brutal, but we need to see more offense. But you got a lot of the familiar names up there. Larkins, pretty far up there. Goal scoring king was Ovi. And for the defense, John Carlson with 85 points led the way. Goal scores, it was Shabbat with 19. Matt Ehrman had 15. <laughs> Make any sense. Uh, and for the goaltenders, the winningest. You had DeSmith, Bishop, and Biddington all at 40. Shutout King, Ranta, and Gibson. In terms of save percentages, Biddington at a 921. So see, it just feels like the goaltenders aren't good enough. And the scoring isn't high enough. So there's just, there's no, there's no great balance here. I would say. There really isn't. Aside from just higher shot output, which could result in more points, but also more saves, I have a feeling that's, that'll be the one thing that we boost up. Uh, rookie of the year this year will be Alex Holtz for New Jersey. We've got the Trevor Zegras, Wallstrom, Bellows, Jake Bean as well. Uh, of course, goalies never win it, but Nedeljkovic was up there. Banachek and my boy Swayman. Good stuff. Hugo Almafelt made, uh, made the NHL this year, huh? And Jack Eichel. Back up to a 91. Things you love to see. We have gotten Jack Eichel back on board here in Buffalo. So the one thing we'll do, is we'll go down to shot frequency, bump that up to high, and if that has a negative effect for our team, so be it, ultimately. It is playoff time for the Buffalo Sabres. I can't believe I'm saying that as we played Detroit in Season 2.